Hello and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Requiem 3BF Tweaks. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Diaries of Death series with uh, Season 4. Uh, Geoffrey Deloch um, is still trying to yeah, find his uh, luck in the world of Skyrim. Last time we have made quite a bit of a progress. Uh, in between the uh, sessions uh, I invested all of our gold into a nice necklace which will give us more armor uh, so given that we are still quite frail that might be good enough and I will still need to temper all of our armor but that uh, can wait because for now we're going to start uh, Kind's Sacred Trials I figured it's a bow, uh, bow only hunter quest, and what better uh, person to do that quest than a hunter like Geoffrey? So, in order to do that, we will need to go to Froki's uh, shack, which is uh, right uh, down here, rift over here. Froki is uh, here. Froki. Just what we need. City folk barging in. Probably looking for an offering to their precious dim. They're stolen idols, imposter gods, sold by silver tongues. No, thank you. Froki will not forget Kai or her sacred trials. What are the sacred trials? It's an old Nord tradition, a test to prove your worth in the eyes of Kai. Show that you're a hunter, All right. no simple butcher. Kai teaches us to respect the beasts and blesses the hunter who will face their champions. True Nord hunters are those who survive the trials. Do you think you're strong enough for Kine's blessing? I would be glad to pass this tradition down. Yes, tell me what to do. defeat guardian beasts blessed by Kine. I will anoint you with the symbol of the wolf, the crab, and the skeever. This will compel the guardian to appear when you reach his lair. Okay. Here's where you need to go. Very good. Next time. So before we go to Bleak Falls, or do any of the other quests, uh, let's kill three guardians, shall we? Before we go on to a hunt, though, good. Here you are. We'll take a Don't fierce uh, war dog bad, with us. It comes to that. Not really the fiercest companion ever, but it will help us against uh, the crabs. I don't want any uh, any companion, but the dog I feel is still a nice little compromise. So we're going to take on the first of uh, the. Three spirits, each of them, uh, are testing themselves, and if we pass it, we might get a token of gratitude. Off we go to the first one, or near the location of the spirit. Well, that was poor evasion, but still, we defeated the spirit of the wolf. It almost seems like we've angered the entire forest as part of that. Every single wolf out there. It's now looking for us. Okay, dog versus dog. I see how it is. I 
Are you kidding me? I really disarmed myself with that. Okay, poor doggo was basically uh, taken out of the combat immediately, but yeah. So, core idea is we're fighting the spirit and a few others, but I dropped just directly to the spirit, which made it, uh, which made it fight us. Okay, cool. Wolf spirit done. Let's get the other two. Good, we just dismounted and we are going to fight a ginormous mud crab. Apparently it doesn't deal a lot of damage, otherwise the dog would, would have been a one-shot, but it's a mud crab, so what are we expecting, right? It's almost dark, I got to be careful not to run into vampires here. Good, off to the third spirit. Off to the third location. Windward Ruins. Where there is a skeever spirit. Okay. A ginormous skeever. Can we please hit that guy? I get the sense that he is somewhat standing somewhere else. Alright, not the most difficult encounter, but now we can return to Pokey. And tell him about the good news, plus hopefully get his bow. I haven't seen the stats in Requiem 3BF Tweaks, but I know that it is a unique item and it does have um, a drain effect on it. I think it was Magicka uh, Drain. I hope that the damage is fine so that we can actually use it. Not that we're in the needs of a lot of Magicka, but... It's still a unique bow, and typically, typically speaking, unique items that you need to work for tend to have quite a bit of power. Make it quick. Maybe you're not so soft after all. Now you're ready for a real challenge. I'll anoint you with the symbol of the bear, the saber cat, and the mammoth. Tread carefully. These are mighty beasts. Here's where you need to go. Well, round number two. Here we go. All right. Okay, we came here to defeat a Saber Cat, but apparently it has just been killed by another Saber Cat. But, the Saber Cat spirit, that is. In order to not let that happen. We are going to kill a saber cat. Can we get out of here, please? Saber cats are quite easy to kill if you block them behind something. Respectively, if you're uh, kiting them around a tree of sorts. Just like bears, so they shouldn't cause too much issue. Next up, um, mammoth and bear are still left. And one of them is right down here. So let's travel there. 
Okay, so we're near the bear. Time for us to kill the bear spirit. And in true bear fashion, they spawned him within a couple of trees. Which means we can nicely kite him around those trees. I am wondering though, uh, since it is a spirit, would silver arrows deal more damage? Does it count as an undead? Oh yeah, they deal way more damage. So it counts as an undead. Cool. Which leaves us with one, and only one, enemy, the giant mammoth. Good, off we go. We're ready for that final challenge. A fitting mammoth graveyard. We do not want to get hit at all. But it seems, as always, the mammoth has its challenges of maneuvering the landscape. Well, I'll pass forward that. Let's go back to Pokey. Time to collect our reward, old man. Well, off we go for a third round. Good, we are at the final challenge. Luckily, we do have a fireball. Time to load some... Silveros. And there we go. That brings us right to Froki's bow. A bit of cash loot. Thank you. Now let's take a look. 143 points of damage. That is awesome. Specifically with the Absorb Stamina enchantment. That's a really, really solid heavy bow, which we can use for the foreseeable future. Better than the Orcish Bow of Burning, which it's done in service. We can use burning arrows. Uh, it's a good enchantment, uh, but uh, Froki's is better, higher damage, and quite frankly, also cooler looking. It's an ancient and old Nord bow. Good. Let's uh, hand in the quest, and then we're off to our actual uh, mm, uh, adventure, which is Bleak Four Barrows. Off we go to finish the quest. I still need to upgrade our armor. That would be the next item. Thank you. For this, 
You have earned the blessing of kind and can count me as a friend. Till next time. Hi there. You're not as dumb as you look. Okay, we can do the tanning rack in a second, but let's take a look what Kind's token does. Damage taken from animals, reduce 10%, increase damage dealt with ranged weapons by 20%, uh, increase your stamina by 40% and uh, uh, renders you immune to slow effects. Uh, thank you, I think that's a great um, addition. Straight up 20% increase. I will keep uh, the Peerless Knight for now but we definitely keep kind's token uh the only reason why i keep uh, the peerless knight is we need armor class and we're dangerously low and i don't want to be one shot but kind's token is good very good all right time for bleak falls barrel and we're going to do that the right way Meaning careful and without rushing it. We have plenty of ammunition. We're definitely ready for the dungeon. Wow, where is where are these frame rate drops coming from? Good, we're picking up a bit of food because we might need that later. still a chest up here I absolutely love this mini game. Okay, we're going to fight against a couple more of the bandits they should be at a disadvantage because we have a fresh long uh, bow that we've just uh, just received from the quest should be easily possible to out dps and quite frankly hit most of these guys oh yeah single hit single kill Well, I tell you what, we need to hit for that. Okay, cool. Nice. So... The DPS is, has certainly in, increased quite a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I would say that's okay. Now let's move inside and hopefully these chitters will go away. Oh, 
Oh, come on. It's not that difficult to hit that Saiken. Am I missing the project they'll drop down? Yeah, apparently. Okay. Good one, two, that and that. You know what? Let's take an ord neck. And that. Good. Bleak Fall Barrows, one of my favorite dungeons. We've run it often, but it never ceases to amaze. It's really a good first dungeon. Of course, the riddles become kind of repetitive, but the core design of the dungeon is really crisp. I can see why they would have chosen that as the first dungeon. Plus the XP is fantastic. Lots of enemies, enough space to kite. Decent loot on top of it. Can't really complain. Yes, please. Okay, doggo one on one versus spider. Got killed by the jump attack. The DPS is noticeably different to our build with Hermetheus, where we had like what 30-ish hits that are that were needed against uh, the creature. Here, the few hits, it felt like almost nothing. Good, we've officially reached the part where the normal stuff is over and we are reaching the delicate part. Don't want to use poison, but we most certainly want to use silver arrows. There we go. They are slow, which oh, is definitely an advantage. Still don't want to be uh, get, getting stuck here.
Gotta be a bit careful with the arrows, it seems. They are eating four arrows a pop. Might want to use the heavier bow. Hmm. Tell you what, that's still three arrow support. That was a frost uh, Durger. That's a shouter. Good, so how many do we have left? 44, and we haven't even really started. I came underprepared with arrows. That's my lesson number one here. can't really let any of uh, these guys continue to stay here the moment that a droger shouts them awake we have a problem Can I continuously miss? Are you telling me it's just straight up? Okay, well, yeah, that was the easiest chest ever. Weakness to fire. Yeah, ancient Nord arrows do not help us here. We need silver arrows. And I will need to craft a bunch. Full string bow helps to reduce the number of arrows needed to only three. But still, if we can't recover them, should have made the mark, to be honest. What was I expecting? 
One-shotting the guys. What's a nice death animation. Okay, so far so good. They are too slow to really catch up. So as long as we're not further confined into closed spaces, we should be fine. Saving an arrow here and there, whenever possible. But we're getting plenty of north arrows, but... Those will not deal damage against uh, the Draugrs. I might find myself in the unfortunate situation that we will need to go back. Getting more arrows. Another scroll of fireball that is helpful. Oh, when they have their little shield up, uh, they get less and less less and less um, suitable for arrows so they take so little damage nothing okay cool well that's a novelty 22 arrows <laughs> were that's not going to be fun yeah these stronger ones I already need four arrows and even if I recover one we're still net minus three out of pocket
Okay, I tell you what, I mean, we're like, what? 20 arrows uh, deep. It's not going to work out for the last room. Uh, plus, I will need to get rid of uh, the ancient Nord arrows. I will do a little trip to the city and then we'll just rebuff and meet here. Good, off we go, we're back. We have filled up our pouch with quite a few arrows. So we should really not run out of arrows again. Better be safe than sorry. I felt that this time we didn't want to do the same mistake Oops, as the last time. And essentially just running out of arrows, so... I built enough to clear two dungeons. Let's hope for a flawless mission here and a good start. I'll keep all of those oil limbs up there and uh, because we're definitely going to pull some of the enemies in here we don't want to fight them in melee And the name of the game will be how to throw a good fireball. down two down did that thing really just bounce off of the head of the uh, the droger That was uh, one of the most hilarious dungeon collisions I've seen in a while. Thing bounces off the head of the Draugr, falls next to the oil on the ground, doesn't ignite the oil. <laughs> well, GG. Apparently it still ignited it enough so that someone else moved into it. Unfortunately, we seem to not be getting XP if they randomly die. Gotta do that final killing blow. Okay, our scrolls are gone. But luckily we're not shy when it comes to range damage. Quite the opposite. Gotta hand it to Doggo. He is fiercely charging into them fiercely charging into them and 
is pulling quite a bit of attention. I don't want to fight against the shouter in a long open corridor. That seems like a death wish. Yep, there we go. Two hits to finish him off. Oh my gosh. Our one hand damage is in so inferior to, uh, to our bow damage. Like the guy had a sliver of health and we couldn't even down him. Meanwhile, we're hitting for 220 to 30. No, no. Oh, barely made it out. I saw that he was a shouter, but too late. A bit of an archer duel here. There we go. I really like this playthrough because it plays a bit more to my natural strength in Skyrim, which is ranged combat and not necessarily fa uh, face down melee combat. As he says that, he misses two shots in a row against the moving target. I think that's a nice draugr. Yep, pretty sure it is. Come on. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, they kneel quite a while.
So, still plenty of arrows left over. Let's see, we got this guy up there. And Doggo does his job, which is relentlessly charging in, dying over and over again. Ocean of Frenzy will really not do anything here. The Gleaning Enchantment is nice. It's okay. I don't want to take any risk here. So we're playing it Mr. Ultra Safe. I could have sworn that I still... would have had a potion, but apparently that's not the case. Easy. Potentially have over prepared for it, but I didn't want to let him spawn with, uh, say, the frost shout. Then he just shouts as we fail to evade and we're, we're ticking down with a one shot breath because we don't have a shield or anything in hand. That's an interesting one. Major health isn't bad. I wish we could use that. But we're not going to do a lot of enchanting. And another inside potion. Okay, cool. Well, that will conclude today's episode, I assume. However, we do still have a few more skills to go through that we would want to upgrade. So let's take a look. Um, we most certainly would want to upgrade Sneak to 25. I would like to upgrade lockpicking to 25 because it absolutely sucks that we are so bad at it. We can brew potions, so I would like to upgrade that to 25 as well. And we're already out of points, but that is okay. In terms of actual skills and what we would want to further upgrade, marksmanship is the obvious choice for the next skill. Dexterity would be an, another one. We don't have any mage skills, so let's go with marksmanship. Put a couple of points in there. Uh, you see that the graters aren't like coming in as much yet as uh, that will happen in the future. But for now, we got a really solid base. And once we do have all of uh, the bases covered, say alchemy to... Uh, 225 uh, we don't need anything here speech arguably for a couple of dialogues yeah but we're 
We're covered with the basics. Going a little bit into health because I want to be able to withstand a blow if it happens. And if my memory serves me well, we wanted marksman increases because there were a few things that we wanted 60 for the draw speed so absolutely 70 and 75 would be great to get uh, as uh, as well but that's a bit of a stretch goal power takes I tell you what, I mean, those aren't bad. But the real deal are these higher level items. Uh, we wanted to go a bit deeper into sneaking. Dexterity is fine. There isn't much we want to do there. Uh, I will look into smithing because we could go with that for the time being. And since we've decided on to, uh, on one hand, might as well start with that and start perking it. Not sure uh, whether we want to do mazes so far. But those four perks are no regret perks for one hand. We can always uh, use them. It's just a matter of finding the right uh, specialization for a one hand weapon so that will uh, that'll work uh, we want to go deeper into marksman I'll save a couple of perks for that evasion I can see how we want to maybe get some uh, with the one hand perks now sneak is an option uh, muffled movement but like I mentioned Yeah, that is Death Strike would be would be decent. I think we can go uh, with Death Strike. Dexterity, um, not much more that we could do at the moment. And the other only other thing is uh, really smithing. And like I said, I I will take a look into it. We we definitely need to skill it higher. So. The challenge that we're running into at the moment is it's not a very perk heavy build, so to speak. Um, really, marksmanship is the core of uh, the build. There are a couple of nice supporting builds. Uh, evasion, for instance, uh, we can definitely go a bit deeper into it. And also the melee combat can benefit from it. Uh, next, deeper perks for, uh, for support are actually smithing. So uh, that would be the next skill to 50. Um, getting at least advanced smithing here for better tempering and then I want to go for arcane craftsmanship so that would be the second skill after marksmanship 60 which allows us to have a draw speed that also gets to 60 in terms of uh, the options here efficient drawing 80 it's not going to happen um, not anytime soon so this is as far as we go into dexterity for now which means really the next focus is uh, getting a bit better armor um, and getting a better short bow weapon and I'll uh, look something up I think I do have the right uh, uh, target for that in the meantime Geoffrey Delors says uh, thank you thanks a lot uh, gives you a little bit of a wave goodbye if uh, you want to level stealth uh, just like we have uh, done how about you sneakily like hit that like button and see if your stealth increases over time take care guys and see you in the next episode bye bye